Despite its enchanting allure, the wilderness can be a relentless instructor. Paragliding provides an exceptional opportunity for people to glide through the vast open sky. Although thrilling, it is fraught with severe realities and inherent risks. It is a sport that requires a deep respect for the capricious elements of nature and the severe outcomes of mistakes. Those who take on this aerial quest must acknowledge the stark reality that their search for excitement is accompanied by considerable danger. Please remember to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Paragliding, a thrilling adventure sport, involves piloting a lightweight, foot-launched glider equipped with a fabric wing and harness. Known as paragliders, participants navigate the sky using wind currents and thermals. More than just a sport, paragliding launches its enthusiasts into a domain where the sky offers an immense challenge to excel. Ascending on fabric wings showcases the bravery of each paraglider, driving them out of their comfort zones and into remarkable heights. The origins of paragliding can be traced back to parachute developments during World War II, with significant advancements in the 1950s. Innovators like Domino Jalbert developed ram air parachutes which improved control and stability. While NASA engineer Francis Regalo's flexible wing design, the Regalo wing, was pivotal in the evolution of modern paraglider canopies in the early 1970s. Mountaineers like Jean-Claude Bayome and André Bone further adapted parachutes for recreational use, leading to controlled mountain descents. Often attributed to David Barish in 1965, the first true paraglider flight marked the beginning, but it wasn't until the 1980s that the sport saw a surge in popularity, thanks to pilots like Jean-Mer Bavan and Laurent de Callum. Throughout the 1980s and 1990s, the technology saw rapid advancements with the introduction of materials like ripstop nylon and mylar, improving durability and design. Competitions emerged in the 1990s featuring cross-country races and aerobatic displays, leading to improved safety standards and certifications. Today, paragliding is a globally recognized adventure sport, continually evolving in terms of materials, safety features, and design, drawing enthusiasts from all walks of life. Who is Iwa Wisniewska? Iwa Wisniewska, a German paraglider of Polish origin, is recognized as one of the foremost paragliders globally, irrespective of gender. Her paragliding journey began in 1991 when she was 20 years old, after observing a group of paragliders skillfully take to the skies. Captivated by how they could ascend so smoothly with just minimal manipulation of their parachutes, she was initially reluctant to try it herself. However, a family visit to Poland nine years later changed everything. Encouraged by her brother, they took a paragliding course together. From that moment, she was hooked. Recalling her first flight, she describes the exhilaration of feeling lifted, barely a meter off the ground, exclaiming it felt as though she had sprouted wings. Paragliding quickly became an obsession leading her to reshape her entire life around the sport, even living out of her car to follow competitions. Within just four years, she rose to the top, winning the German Paragliding Championship and numerous World Cup titles, confirming her elite status in paragliding. Despite her success, the World Championship title in Manila, Australia, a prime spot for paragliders due to its exceptional conditions, remained her unclaimed goal. At 36, still deeply engaged in competitive paragliding, she was determined to conquer the world championship in Australia, preparing six months in advance for the challenge. Preparation for the Global Championships Ava faced a severe challenge as she endured a serious accident in Switzerland, resulting in a broken pelvis, a condition that would typically incapacitate most. Driven by her determination to win the coveted championship, Ava embarked on a rigorous physical rehabilitation regimen. Within months, she was back in peak form by February 2007, just in time for the upcoming competition. Ava participated in the XC Open, a cross-country paragliding contest held at the World Championship venue, aiming to acquaint herself with the local conditions and obstacles to better prepare for the competition. She set her goals not only to win the women's title, but to dominate the overall rankings. Her training partner of three years, Andreas May, expressed confidence in her, noting her as a key competitor and one of the world's top pilots, 
expected to outshine both female and male competitors. The event, emphasizing endurance over speed, requires participants to cover the longest distance possible, combining physical strength and mental stamina. Pilots enjoy the freedom to select their flight paths, aiming for the farthest landing spot. The competition starts with pilots launching from Mount Bora at around 11.30 a.m., about 30 minutes post-briefing. Approximately 60 pilots take off, mainly heading north. Pilots use thermals, columns of rising hot air, to gain altitude for cross-country flights, navigating between these thermals and making use of prevailing winds for gliding. Clouds serve as critical markers that aid in increasing their travel speed. Pilots aim for larger clouds to maximize their cross-country velocities and to ensure victory. They need to expertly navigate with strong tailwinds, moving toward forming clouds and passing them before they turn into thunderstorms or larger cloud formations. After launching, pilots group into formations known as gaggles, and with a prevailing southerly wind, most in the first gaggle opt to head north. As time is of the essence, they must quickly move past areas of atmospheric instability. An hour into the launch window, the German team, including Ava, prepares to take off. Choosing not to launch too early, they allow earlier pilots to mark the path and air currents for smoother navigation. Ava carries out pre-flight checks and sets her GPS track log, acknowledging the southerly winds and planning to navigate north among the developing clouds. Although the clouds are visible and scattered at takeoff, no immediate danger is evident. However, Ava's friend, Austrian paraglider Gerald Emer, already worried about the possible development of thunderstorms, arrives at Mount Bora, sensing the upcoming challenge. Despite his concerns and the competition pressures, Gerald decides to participate, underlining the intricate dynamics and risks like sudden storms, which pose significant challenges for top-tier paragliders a factor beyond their control. Nevertheless, Ava takes off, venturing into the vast sky, marking the start of a memorable day in the history of paragliding, into the storm. Throughout the journey, there is constant radio communication with ground teams who assist in monitoring the weather and ensuring retrieval processes are in place. The expedition begins smoothly as a straightforward cross-country venture. However, the skies gradually become more threatening, causing a split among the group members. Positioned towards the back of the leading formation, Ava, flying beside Gerald, is aware of the worsening cloud conditions. Gerald acknowledges the cloud issue but decides to continue navigating northwards between the clouds as long as feasible. Nearby flies Hijong Pin, a top competitor from the national Chinese team. While some pilots successfully circumvent the burgeoning storm, a minor cloud creates complications for Ava and Gerald, dimming the initially hopeful outlook. As larger clouds swiftly accumulate, they cast a daunting shadow, escalating the pilots' concerns about potential dangers. Gerald grows anxious, and Ava, observing the menacing clouds, voices her worries about the rapidly enlarging clouds, recognizing the increasing darkness and the inherent risks involved. The view ahead of the paragliders offers a scenic display of appealing cumulus clouds, and despite the looming threat, there remains a hopeful belief that they can outpace the impending storm. In the XC Open, pilots have the autonomy to make crucial weather-related decisions, decisions that can be vital for their safety, sometimes determining life or death. As the situation unfolds, the pilots at the back realize a significant formation of clouds forming ahead. Most of them decide to land after covering approximately 60 kilometers, 37 miles, prompted by the unfolding events. This critical information is relayed to Stefan, the team leader, to prepare for the challenges ahead. As numerous pilots descend, the severity of the storm cell becomes glaringly evident. Typically, storms develop over hours, but on this occasion, the clouds expand rapidly, forming threatening cumulonimbus clouds capable of producing severe weather phenomena like hail, thunder, and lightning. Should these cells merge, a severe thunderstorm could result. The smaller clouds that the pilots tried to navigate around soon merge into the larger ones, forming a massive storm cell. The storm clouds now stretch over 20 kilometers, 12 miles wide, a development initially underestimated. 
Ava, realizing the danger of being sucked into the cumulonimbus if she flew underneath, strives desperately to keep up and remain competitive. Although she spots a hint of blue sky, the full extent of the storm is hidden from her view. Participating in paragliding competitions is intensely competitive, driven by the thrill of victory and the desire to push personal limits. For Ava, this transforms into a race against time as she follows two Swiss pilots, approximately 500 meters ahead. However, as she lags behind, the merging clouds form an overwhelming force. The convergence into a massive cloud mass marks a point of no return for the affected pilots, pulling them up to great heights and leaving them powerless to resist. Ava, caught in the midst of the storm, is hurled upwards by a massive thermal uplift mixing cold and hot air. Despite her experience, she cannot control her parachute as she is sucked into the clouds. Struck by hailstones and trying not to panic, Ava initiates an emergency descent by spiraling, which is the safest way to lose height quickly. Despite her efforts, the upward pull is stronger, and after a few minutes she resigns to her fate, overwhelmed by the speed of ascent. Meanwhile, Gerald, also caught in the storm, recognizes the grave situation. He recalls seeing Ava spiraling nearby, but then the wind, like a giant hand, lifts her away. Moments later, Gerald sees Zhang Pin also being sucked into the storm, but fortuitously, Zhang Pin pops out near the storm's edge. Gerald lands near some old farm buildings, seeking shelter from the fierce storm. Inside, he contacts the Austrian team leader and shares his coordinates. Concerned for Ava and Zhang Pin, but knowing they must wait out the storm. After the storm, Gerald, now safe in a barn with other team members, reflects on the narrow escape and the dangers still facing Ava and Zhang Pin. Meanwhile, Ava, in a precarious position, is pulled upward at an incredible rate, spiraling uncontrollably into the dark, stormy sky. Unable to see, she fears for the other pilots who were nearby and similarly endangered. Struck by lightning, Zhang Pin loses his life, a tragic turn amidst the chaos. In these dire circumstances, Ava prays for divine intervention, hoping for survival despite the overwhelming odds. Simultaneously, team leader Stefan Mast is unaware of the grave danger Ava faces. He knows only that she is far ahead, battling severe weather, and when communication with her ceases, his concern deepens, fearing the worst. This harrowing account highlights the extreme risks and intense experiences of competitive paragliding, where pilots not only race against each other, but also contend with the formidable forces of nature. At an altitude of 33,000FT-10, 000M, the atmosphere is crucial for providing oxygen essential for survival in high-altitude sports like mountaineering. Above 7,000M or 23,000 feet, known as the death zone. The human body uses up oxygen faster than it can be replenished. In paragliding, no one has managed to survive above this altitude. Previously, turbulence has caused fatalities at 6,000 M and 5,000 M due to factors like hailstones, lack of oxygen, and hypothermia. As Ava's vision began to fade and her strength waned, she struggled against the fierce storm. She reached nearly 7,000 M, just below the dangerous death zone. Her GPS showed incredible climbing speeds, sometimes exceeding 40 m or 130 feet per second, a remarkable achievement. Elevated rapidly to these heights, she had only a two-minute window to acclimatize to the thinning air and scarce oxygen. Temperatures dropped to a chilling minus 40 degrees Celsius. Soon after, Ava lost consciousness and control of her glider, spiraling through the storm at 100 kilometers per h. Her tracking log recorded an altitude of 9,946 m, or 32,631 feet, surpassing Mount Everest by over a kilometer, placing her at the edge of the stratosphere where temperatures dropped to minus 55 degrees C. In a hibernation-like state, the glider kept her afloat at the storm's peak where the air was calmer. The glider's pendulum design provided stability, requiring no active piloting despite the perilous conditions. The cold slowed her metabolism, conserving energy for vital organs with the limited oxygen available. Typically, survival at such altitudes is measured in seconds, but Ava, without specialized equipment, miraculously defied these odds. 
hovering at the fringe of the stratosphere, 10 km above the Earth, for about 45 minutes, Ava was in grave danger of brain and organ failure. Covered in ice at 30,000 feet above a storm cloud, she relied on her 6 kg nylon paraglider. Unconscious, her body leaned, causing the glider to turn slowly, as shown by ground track logs. With temperatures at minus 55 degrees C, her wing iced over and her harness became heavy with hail. Suddenly the wing stalled and collapsed, and she plummeted through thin air at speeds over 200 km slash h, faster than typical freefall. After falling nearly 3,000 m at around 6,900 m, the glider reopened and autonomously resumed flight in the thicker atmosphere with more oxygen and milder conditions, reviving her body. Upon regaining consciousness, still disoriented and just below the death zone at 6,900 m, Ava faced the severe cold at the storm's edge, teetering on being drawn back into the storm cell. Despite potential delirium, her instincts and experience helped her maintain focus and make sound decisions, essential for her survival. She thought of her parents, praying for survival and deciding to initiate a controlled descent to escape the storm faster. It was a perilous and long descent, with the glider heavy with water and ice, but she was determined never to give up, focusing solely on what she could do to survive. This recount of the event underscores her resilience and determination in the face of extreme adversity, the descent and safety. A lifeless body was found four kilometers from where the storm initially hit, tragically killed instantly by a lightning strike. Meanwhile, 20 minutes after the storm, Austrian pilots who had taken shelter in a barn were located and picked up by their leader, Gerald. He was hurriedly trying to find the missing aviators without knowing the grim fate of Zhang Pin. At the same time, Ava, barely able to see through her iced-over eyelashes, spotted a farm and aimed to land nearby despite the numbness creeping through her gloves. With a burst of determination, she targeted a paddock for her descent, managing to land smoothly. The full impact of her ordeal hadn't sunk in yet. Emerging from the cloud, Ava stopped circling and focused on landing against the wind. In the final glide, she let the wind assist her and pulled the brakes at the last moment, touching down gently. Once her glider came to rest, she realized she had made it through and was immensely grateful. The thought of how long it might take to get home or who would find her didn't bother her. Survival was her priority. However, the intense cold was a pressing concern. Exhausted, she attempted to stand to warm up, but could only curl up for warmth. She tried using her radio, thinking it might function better now, but it failed. Suddenly her mobile phone rang. Forgotten in her jacket, it barely connected her to Andreas before the call dropped. Despite the poor reception, she typed her coordinates into a text and prepared to send it once the signal returned. Astonishingly, her phone rang once more and she heard Andreas's voice. Weakly, she pleaded for help, aware that rescue was on its way. Though Ava had endured the storm, her situation was still precarious as her team needed to find her exact location quickly and her body temperature was dangerously low, risking her life even as help approached. The Aftermath Upon the Germans' arrival, they quickly pinpointed that Gerald and the Austrian team were only about 20 kilometers from Ava's position and immediately directed them to her location. When Gerald learned that Eva was still alive, he was driven by an urgent need to reach her despite believing her chances of survival were slim. Remarkably, within half an hour, Gerald and his team arrived at a site where they were surprised to find Ava's paraglider intact, its harness packed with ice and hail. They quickly helped her into a vehicle and sped off to the nearest hospital. In the back seat, Ava checked her GPS and was shocked to see that it had registered a height of nearly 10,000 meters or 33,000 feet. Back in Germany, the GPS manufacturer invited Gerald to their office as they were skeptical that the device could have accurately recorded such an extreme altitude under severe conditions of negative 50 degrees. After downloading and examining the flight data, they were amazed to discover the altitudes reached were even greater than initially recorded. Ava left the hospital soon after her arrival, suffering only from frostbite on her ears and legs. Doctors were astounded by her survival at such heights, noting her normal oxygen levels. 
News of Ava's extraordinary ordeal spread worldwide, although the joy was dimmed by the tragic death of her fellow paraglider, Zhang Pin. The tight-knit paragliding community was deeply shaken. Ava realized how incredibly lucky she was to have survived, given the proximity of just 500 meters between her and Zhang Pin. Six days later, despite the recent trauma, Ava took to the skies again, just a day before the World Championship. She expressed how liberating and wonderful the flight felt, almost as enchanting as her first. Although she emerged physically unscathed from the disaster, the loss of Zhang Pin lingered in her thoughts, altering her outlook on life and competition. Ava vowed to avoid unnecessary risks going forward, acknowledging her previous error and emphasizing the need for personal judgment independent of others. She confidently declared that such an incident would not recur. Ava returned to Mount Bora, where TV crews gathered to document her incredible comeback. Most people would hesitate to fly again after such an ordeal, yet there she was, back in the air with the same glider, just a week later. Reflecting on her quick return to paragliding, Ava felt a compelling sense of purpose. She needed solitude to contemplate Zhang Pin's death and her survival, eventually accepting her fortunate escape as perhaps having a special reason to continue living. Conclusion Safety Tips Despite its captivating allure, paragliding harbors hidden dangers. This sport, driven by a quest for adrenaline and freedom, exposes participants to numerous severe risks. Cloud suck represents a significant threat to paragliders, hang gliders, and sailplane pilots. This occurs when intense thermal updrafts, especially under cumulus or cumulonimbus clouds, forcefully lift aircraft upwards. The height of these clouds often indicates the strength of the updrafts and the likelihood of encountering cloud suck, which is most prevalent in moist, low-pressure environments. It is vital to perform an extensive weather check before flying. Avoid flying if there is a forecast of thunderstorms or significant cloud formation. Always keep a watchful eye on the clouds. If you notice rapid vertical growth, navigate away from the area. Stay calm, as panic can exacerbate the situation. To escape an updraft, initiate a rapid descent using your speed bar or spiral techniques. Maintain precise control over your glider and perform maneuvers smoothly without sudden changes. Use your instruments effectively. Monitor your altitude and descent rate with an altimeter and variometer. Stay alert, particularly if visibility is compromised. Fly cautiously and make use of navigational aids such as GPS devices and altimeters. Resorting to a reserve parachute should be your last option, considered only if a controlled descent is unfeasible. If you are unsure about the weather conditions or your ability to handle cloud suck, it is wise to err on the side of caution and seek advice from experienced pilots or instructors. This crucial advice can help you safely navigate potentially dangerous outdoor activities. Thank you for watching.